At ESMO 2023, we saw two really interesting studies presented about cancer of unknown primary. The first was a, the CAPISCO trial, which was a randomised trial really looking to test whether using molecularly guided therapy based on next generation sequencing results was going to result in better outcomes than routine chemotherapy. The second trial was the CUP1 trial, which was a trial that came out of the UK and was really looking to understand whether using a molecular tissue of origin classifier was going to be better at finding a diagnosis than using a routine panel of standard immunohistochemistry tests. During ESMO 2023, I was delighted to present the first results from our CAPISCO trial. And this is a trial looking at trying to improve outcomes for patients with cancer of unknown primary. These are a group of patients that have terrible outcomes with our existing standard of care, which is to give them platinum doublet based chemotherapy. And we know that the majority will be dead in under a year when we do that. We've also learnt with the revolution in genomics that about a third of CUP patients will have potentially actionable targets if you do next generation sequencing. So the idea of the CAPISCO trial was actually to test this hypothesis and see if we did next genomic sequencing and linked that with available treatments, could we improve outcomes for our CUP patients. So it was a randomised international uh, phase two trial that um, took patients with the worst CUP, so the worst players who had um, non-squamous unfavourable subset CUP. And they needed to have central review by an eligibility panel to determine if they really were CUP and not something else. So we lost quite a lot of patients that way when we made a specific diagnosis. We then took the remaining 631 patients um, and they started treatment with um, three cycles of induction platinum-based chemotherapy using a platinum-based doublet of the investigator's choice, which was either carboplatin paclitaxel, cisplatin gemcitabine, or carboplatin and gemcitabine. And while they were having that um, chemotherapy, we actually did next generation sequencing. So in order to get into the trial, patients needed to have tissue available to allow that to happen and or a blood specimen. And we used the foundation assay um, to do that sequencing during the chemotherapy. And then after three cycles, those patients who'd had some response, who either had a complete or partial response or stable disease, were randomised three to one to either have molecularly guided therapy or to continue with chemotherapy. And it was really a global collaboration with multiple companies involved. So we actually had access to 12 different therapies in the molecularly guided therapy arm, which was fantastic. And then the primary endpoint of the study was what was the progression-free survival? And what we found was that it was a positive study. So the hazard ratio was uh, 0.72 with a clear improvement in progression-free survival in those patients who received molecularly guided therapy. We also found that the response rate to the additional treatment after the chemotherapy was about twice as good with molecularly guided therapy compared to having routine chemotherapy. And importantly, we found that uh, safety um, was, if anything, better, certainly not worse. And quality of life, importantly, was maintained in those patients who had the molecularly guided therapy. The other important thing we learnt was that the group of patients who actually had a molecular abnormality you could target, which were about 30% of the trial population, had an even better outcome. So. Um, those patients actually had a progression-free survival time of about eight months compared to only a bit over four months, so twice as long as having normal chemotherapy. I really think that the trial makes the case that we should be giving access to our CUP patients to upfront next generation sequencing as soon as they're diagnosed so that we can use it to inform better treatment options for our patients. During ESMO 2023, we also saw the results of the CUP1 study presented, and we've been waiting for these results for some time. This was a study predominantly um, performed in the UK uh, that looked at the question of whether using a molecular classifier to um, see what the likely tissue of origin is of a CUP case was going to be better to using a structured panel of immunohistochemistry. And we've just seen the preliminary results from this study at ESMO 2023. And interestingly, what we saw is that 
the results really weren't too different between using the classifier versus using a structured panel of immunohistochemistry. The main difference found was that it seemed that the molecular classifier was a bit better at calling cholangiocarcinoma, um, which is something that we know makes up a large subset of cup patients. So I think that these are very interesting results, but um, I think it also tells us that it's actually hard to test any of these results in, in isolation. Really, for, to make progress in cup patients, we need to look at the whole picture. We need to think about what were the symptoms, what were the signs, where were the sites of metastases, what does the pathologist tell us, what does the molecular information tell us, and put it all together um, to make the best diagnosis we can, as well as treatment recommendations for our patients. Mm -hmm.